Welcome to the Igniting Hope Podcast, where you will experience catalytic encouragement and practical tools to renew your mind with truth instead of lies, so you can experience transformation in your emotions, circumstances, and influence. Let's break off self-limiting beliefs together like never before. Today's podcast is titled Daisy's Fear Issues. <laughs> Daisy's our dog. By the way, I'll get into this message in a moment. It's going to help in relationships. It's going to help in your leadership. It's even going to help in understanding your own reactions to other people uh, in your life. And before we get into it, we just started our Igniting Marriages six-week online course. If you're interested in just upgrading your marriage or you have a crisis in your marriage or you have a great marriage and you want to go hire our team, we've set up some powerful things. And then on June 14th and 15th, we're doing a two-day uh, online Igniting Marriages event. So that's happening at ignitinghopeacademy.com. I'm starting my uh, fully convinced eight-week online course, two or three hours a week only, commitment, and it's all pretty much made for people on the go. Yeah, if you like this content and the podcast, the book Fully Convinced and the course, I believe, encapsulates this. Yeah, that book is really probably my most powerful book because it takes all the concepts of beliefs, decision-making, hope, joy, and packs it into one under the topic of decision-making. That too, ignitinghopeacademy.com. You can find info about that, but I want to get into Daisy's fear issues. Now, my wife, Wendy, and I, we're animal lovers, usually have dogs, cats. <laughs> they're, they're therapeutic. They're fun. They're good companions in life. We have an empty nest in, in our home, and, and so it, it, it's good. And uh, I've gotten a lot of messages out of my animals, and I talk about my dog, Buddy, and my book, Fully Convinced, and his indecision. My We had a lab before that years ago named Snoopy and I talk about him and the incredible hearing but I want to talk about Daisy now he's she is about oh year and a half two years old and and she's from the same parents as our other dog buddy who's a year and a half older she's about three and a half buddy is and but they're different litters same parents different litters now here's the issue that Daisy had, well, we got her when she was about eight months old, and so I would reach out my hand to pet her, and she would back off. She would recoil, and I was tempted to get frustrated. I was tempted to say, Daisy, what's wrong with you? Don't you understand? My motives are good, but Daisy's reaction to me was based on past experiences that she had. I don't know what those experiences are, but she her response was one of lack of trust of the motives of the people in her life. <laughs> and God loves to speak to us through that which we love. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He leads me besides still waters, green pastures, the whole thing. He related his own spiritual experience to what he was doing and his responsibilities. And, uh, and God does that. Whatever you love, God will speak through. Whatever your current responsibilities are, God will speak through. So he, he speaks through my animals, my other dog, Buddy, you put your, your hand out and he'll just come up right to it. I take walks. Buddy will just go up, thinks everybody loves, loves him. Daisy's more hesitant. And same parents, different litter, but they've had different experiences in life. Now, what I'm sharing here about Daisy, as I reflect on it, I believe this is, there's some great important truths for us. First of all, even as we understand ourselves, we understand, okay, my reaction to current people in my life is influenced greatly by my experience with people in my past. And just knowing that is helpful. Understanding like Daisy has a trigger. A trigger is an emotional response to something that's happening based on past experience. 
I mean, we could have trauma. We could just have uh, negative experiences with leaders, with, with friends, with bosses, whoever. And it impacts us now. It is the healthy person who can identify tendencies in their lives and to be able to verbalize that, yep, I have the tendency to not trust leaders. I have the tendency to, when this type of thing happens, I react negatively. I know my wife was, we gave our hearts to Jesus at age 19, and we experienced some I would say religious, legalistic uh, influences in, in our lives, and um, like most people in the church have, but it, it impacted her in a negative way because it really put a repressive uh, spirit on her. And so she was aware, she became aware, not right at first, but eventually certain kind of preachers who would emphasize certain things that she would shut them down, not listen to them and, and maybe even label them. And, but she, she, as she understood that she's gone past it, able to eat the meat, leave the bones type of situations. Um, And so this understanding our own experiences, how they impact our current relationships and being able to identify that and sometimes even talk to people about it. Yep. It's not about you. I'm reacting. I want to let you know it's not about you. But it also really impacts how our relationships are with other people. When we begin to understand and the more that we mature, the more that we become a spiritual father and mother rather than being an elder brother uh, person in relationships, then we realize, you know, like with, with Daisy, okay, again, I, I'm tempted to be frustrated. Daisy, what's wrong with you? Don't... Why do you mistrust my motives? <laughs> and as I understand that, then I know other people. And I, I'm, I'm, there's many great leaders who are, uh, by the way, you are a great leader. There's lead, great leaders listening. And we have experienced people who react negatively to us. Now, sometimes it's our own fault. Sometimes our own dysfunction, our own control, our own uh, insensitivity causes even further pain. And and I'm just saying, thank you, Lord, you're healing us of that. Thank you that you're healing us of, uh, of, of mishandling people and not being a safe leader. But we've, we've come in contact with people who respond negatively to us. We're trying to help. And then there's a trigger. There's a trigger. And there's a, there's a response that we say, what is wrong? We want to say, what is wrong with you? And certainly there's, we need to have brave communication. Certainly we need to have cultures of feedback. But I want to help create cultures of restoration. It says in Galatians 6.1, it says, uh, you who are overcome in a fault... Um, If any man is overcoming a fault, let those who are spiritual restore them with gentleness, considering themselves, lest they're also tempted. And restoration is not just about people who have fallen morally and that, but there's, but one of the things that leaders do is people who have been overcome in faults of, uh, uh, because of their negative experiences in relationships. We as leaders have the privilege of restoring people. And I think about even even Daisy, and Daisy has made such great progress since we've had her uh, almost two years now. She has made great progress to where her trust levels are increasing, and that has a direct correlation to what Wendy and I have done of proving trustworthy, of proving that our motives are good, proving that when we stick our hand out that we want to bless we want that that it's a good thing and even this thing is not just about leadership it's about relationships in general i say empowerment i wrote the book culture of empowerment empowerment is not uh, a, a leadership style it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle we're empowering 
The default of the elder brother mindset from Luke 15, that story, the default of an elder brother mindset is to first see what's wrong with a person or place. The default of a father mindset is first see what's right with a person or place. And we know we're moving into a place where we can restore, where God can trust us with the daisies in our life, the daisies that come under our influence when our default is to first see what's right. Because if we're just fixated on what's wrong, by the way, the Lord is freeing people up from being fixated on what's wrong with themselves, what's wrong with others, what's wrong in their environments. The Lord is delivering you from being fixated on what's wrong. <laughs> and he's helping and he's, re- he's building in you a father mindset to first see what's right with a person or place. That doesn't mean we're gullible if we first see what's right with a person or place, but that's what we're looking for. And we're going to be able to look past. People won't mind you moving their dirt as long as they know you see the gold in them. We're going to be able to look past the responses, look past the uh, dysfunctional behaviors, look past uh the lack of trust that people have for us. We're going to look past that. We're going to see a person and we're going to be part of restoring. And it may not always work. There may be people just because of the the dysfunction in their lives that we need to address directly what's going on. And sometimes I know in my own experience, people have not responded always well to that. But I've also seen so many restored so many people. And I just believe that this message impacts our leadership, impacts our discipleship to where we are going to be healers, to where we're going to have the daisies in our life. And we are going to see them trust again. Wow, wow, wow. Hey, I just love sharing this and I bless your relationships. I bless you with even greater self-awareness of your own responses to certain kinds of people, your responses to leadership, uh, your just an awareness, your ability to uh, when need to say, hey, it's not about you. I want to let you know. And then I bless you again as a leader and as as a a discipler and in relationship with people who may be triggered or just maybe just completely or partially just not trusting. And you are a healer. Hey, if you like this message, why don't you tell somebody else about it? Hey, we here at Igniting Hope, we are here to ignite your hope. There's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. And once people get true hope, circumstances cannot stay the same. I love what the Lord asked Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37, where he said, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And God showed him a valley of very dry bones. God's not afraid of us seeing how dry things are. God's not afraid of us seeing how dry the nation is or how dry the family is as long as we don't get our beliefs out of its dryness. And the Lord told Ezekiel, he said, prophesy to the bones. And, and it's, I find it fascinating that God didn't say, Ezekiel, step aside, watch me prophesy. Because God needs to find, he needs to partner with somebody who has hope to accomplish his will. God loves to partner with unreasonably optimistic people. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Increasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with truth instead of lies. Decreasing hope is the evidence we're renewing our mind with lies instead of truth. And remember, too, the joy of the Lord is your strength. We don't, we don't need strength at the end of the battle. We need strength in the middle of the battle. And for pretty much everybody listening, this is just not a good season to walk in radical joy. Matter of fact, you know what? I've never found a good season to walk in radical joy. There's always a reason why now is not a good time. You know, just either whether it's personal issues, relational issues, financial issues, uh, national issues, 
bad news, just things happening to people. And certainly we don't want to be insensitive to those things, but we we can't live a life of perpetual non-joyness because I don't need strength at the end of the battle. I need strength in the middle of the battle. I've got a lot of things going, just like you. I've got uncertainties. I have areas that I want resolved. I've got desires. I have uh, things that in my family that I, I want to see change. I need strength now. And we increase joy through thanksgiving and delighting in the Lord. We delight in the Lord. And by the way, next week's podcast is going to be so powerful uh, on living while we're waiting, living while we're waiting. People of, of faith who don't value hope are waiting to live. But people who have faith and hope are living while they're waiting. They're delighting in the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 4, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And the delighter's delighting with unfulfilled desires, and it's in the delighting, it's in that that creates the wineskin on the inside of us to be able to contain and increase the desire once it's fulfilled for us and that we'll steward it well. Hey, we're doing, uh, in September, I'm starting the Backland Leadership Academy. It's going to be powerful. I'm taking the eight pillars of leadership that I teach on. That's the foundation of my mentoring of people, the pillars of inspiring and leading yourself, transformational beliefs, intentionality, healthy relationships, speaking life, faith-filled decision-making, the culture of gladness and empowerment, building big people. I take those eight pillars, and then we're also taking the structure that we've used for 15 years uh, here at the Bethel with our third-year students, interns that I've used through the years and raised up many leaders. We're taking that structure and we're bringing it into an online format where I'm going to be mentoring people in small groups and it is going to be powerful. I believe if someone spends nine months with me, they'll never be the same again. And I, I am looking for people who want to go to the next level in their life and leadership. Great leaders have great beliefs, great priorities, and great habits. We're going to be taking all three of those in the academy. And the most important person that we lead is ourselves and self-leadership, personal victory. It is going to be so good. It's going to be a little over $4,000 to do this. And I, I know there's some of my podcast listeners who are going to sense a calling in that. We're going to give more details out soon. Uh, but if you're interested and you say, hey, uh, put me on the list for the Backland Leadership Academy's Email us at info at ignitinghope.com and let us know and we'll get you some information and then we're going to be releasing uh, some promo materials and give you the opportunity for uh, to register soon, probably at the beginning of June, end of May here, 2024. Wow, wow, wow. What a, what a privilege it is to speak with you today. I bless you. Daisy's fear issues. <laughs> I'm going to be taking Daisy for a walk again, uh, probably today and uh, at one of our river parks here in Redding. And she's getting better. I'm getting better. I'm not as triggered as much as I used to. You're getting better. And you are a strong leader, restoring people and building trust and being a healer of those daisies in your life. Thank you so much for listening. You can be a part of our live stream of this Igniting Hope podcast by joining our social media channels on YouTube and Facebook and hitting notifications. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing and leaving a review. Help us get the message of hope out to more people by liking and sharing this podcast. Also, we have so many more incredible resources for you, including books, events, and courses on our website, ignitinghope.com. And why don't you say this concerning the message in today's podcast? I receive it and I'll never be the same again.